Welcome to the Screencast-O-Matic session of the ADO.net Phase 1 project for Jack Dauber, RTC student in the ADO.net class. And it is May 1st, May Day, 2015. This is a database that I'm using. It's the one that uh, Russell and I have been working on to give to Stephanie McIrvin to actually use live at the end of class for tracking EAS students. There are stored procedures that are being employed in this database. We have populated some student data. And these are actual students that are here at RTC currently that would be candidates for the program. And we have put in some of the courses, which are the courses that correspond to the ones that will be needed for those that are going to be in the EAS program. To access the database, this is the ADO project, this is the middle tier. The middle tier establishes the connection, returns the information using the data reader. This is one that is to return all of the students that are still requiring prerequisites. I'll show you how to use that. This one returns the courses that have been completed. This returns the courses that are still needed to be completed by student. This returns all the students if you know the student ID. This one returns everyone that has the same last name in the reader to choose from. And this returns all of the students to populate a list view that will be used to create an Excel spreadsheet that Stephanie can use as she would need. And this is how we add the students when you want to add new students. This returns all of the courses. This is for adding new courses. Form 1 is the parent form that the others inherit from. The courses visually inherit from Form 1. Employers visually inherit from Form 1. I haven't populated anything in the employers yet. And students, it also visually inherits from Form 1. Form 1 is the main form that starts. We also do a lot of error handling. Bring back up the ADO net. We do a lot of uh, error handling. We have to check to make sure that we have values and then check that the values uh, actually meet the criteria that are going to be used in the database. In addition to error handling in code, we limit the number of spaces that can be used in the forms themselves. You hover over whatever it is, it makes the label bigger. So if we go to students, and then you can close the students and be back in the main courses, be back in the courses. The employers doesn't have anything populated from that. So if we start with the students and Stephanie has a question, who is lacking CSI 182? And of course we're going to eventually use a combo box for that. This shows us the students that still need that course. This is a re result of the return from that query. And likewise, if we check who have the course, it will show us the other students that already have taken that course. And then this is all students that still need prerequisites. If you know the student's last name, you can type in the last name and click view and it brings up just that one student in the list view. It's actually yet a student ID. If they don't know, you can view by the student ID as well. So if they know the student ID, you can just click in that. We'll add a student.
also the it's not possible to put in more characters than a telephone number would accommodate. That's part of the error handling. Don't need a personal email. At that point, if you want to add the student, it says all fields must contain information. You don't actually need to have the personal email. But all of the information that's required has to be in there. And uh, put in the birth date. We'll say February 1st, 1980. And then you can add. Go back into the students and we go to view all students. Now we have Karen post as one of the students. Adding a new student from here just brings up an occurrence of the same window to add new. If someone said, hey, I want to add a new student from courses, because they're looking at courses, then they can add new and it brings up the student information. And likewise, if Stephanie was looking at the courses here, and then she said, while she's at the course screen, she wanted to quickly look up a student. And that's why this resides on every page, so that you can immediately access student data. Course numbers can be added. And the close courses closes this screen, exit, well, exit this window and take us back to the main. I think that's what we have for now. So we can add a student, we can add a course, we can create a list view of all, or we can query a specific course. We can Query a specific student, and we're able to make modifications to the data or add new records as we need. Oh, well, and again, most of the error handling is handled through the front end interface as well. So that's my screencast-o-matic. I hope it was informative and I hope it meets all the criteria that we need to get an A on this assignment. Have a good morning and enjoy the rest of your day.